Hello, I'm Robin Gibson, and this is the Harvard House Money Morsel. Welcome back. Thank you for joining us again. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Click the bell when you get a notification of our release of a new video. I'm sitting today with uh, Billy Pelser, uh, Chief Economist and Portfolio Manager at Harvard House. Welcome, Billy. Thank you. Billy, uh, we've seen over the last sort of 10 days or so that the RAND has had a bit of a blowout. And uh, I think as we sit at the moment, we're trading about uh, 18 RAND, 19. 21, so, actually. Uh, 18.21, sure. Okay. Um, so that was a long commute <laughs> this morning. Um, what is interesting, though, is that normally when we see the RAND uh, blowing out like this, we see the bond market uh, yields also rising with it. But that doesn't seem to be happening, which is unusual. So what's the story behind the story here? Yeah. Robin, before we get to the bond market, I think we must just take a step back on the currency. And, and um, I would like to, you know, people to be reminded that the movement in the currency is almost like a share price. South Africa is the company. Okay. And um, as we know, on share prices, depending on what's happening within the business, the share price can go up or go, can go down. So. So when we look at the rent at the moment, it has yeah, weakened a lot against the, the dollar. So there's some technical factors and then there's obviously what I call the company. So let's just quickly focus on the fact that the dollar is also very strong. So, and it's always across, it's one relative to the other. Yes. The dollar being strong at this point in time, <clears throat> I don't want to spend too much time, but we've seen inflation coming out and we've seen almost like a slightly better economic performance in the US. So people are looking at the US and saying, well, interest rates might stay higher for longer. Yeah. So it's a it's an opportunity in the sense of let's put our money back in, in the euro in the dollar or back in America. So okay. so the counter is us weakening, but we must remember that we are South Africa. So um, from a company perspective. The CEO and senior management is not doing well at the moment. <laughs> so um, we had the State of the Nation address. Um, Michael last week said that, you know, we want action. Yes. It's the same in a company from your senior management and your, your managers and so on, you want the action. We are still waiting for the so-called cabinet reshuffle. We're waiting for this Minister of Electricity to be appointed, which we thought all will happen sort of almost immediately because Eskim has been a problem for years, so yes. the action is not there. So I think there's an element of this in the weakening of the currency as we're waiting, and that has a risk factor. Then the company in itself, if we get to the CFO's division, um, what is the income and the expenditure in this, in this company? So we've got a budget coming up. There are warning lights. The Reserve Bank sent one by saying GDP expectation is for a weak economy this year. So yeah. suddenly you, you've got your question on your income line. Mm -hmm. And then the, um, the head of the uh, receiver of revenue came out and said, hmm, uh, I might have problems in getting some of the income in. Plus you're talking more expenditure, not just electricity, but we know the state of what's so the type of thing. So suddenly the <laughs> accounting division is saying, listen, the company is not performing the way it should be performing. Whoops, there goes the currency. You know, yes. that type yes. of thing. And then the marketing department, Yes. We've got uh, the uh, grey listing imminent. Oh, yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's an issue. Plus, Fitch, all these rating agencies are saying, hang on, this electricity issue plus slower GDP, that type of thing, you know, there goes your marketing exercise in the sense of you haven't done enough to stay within your credit rating environment, uh, the grey listing and those type of things. So in combination, all of these things are probably 70% behind the move in the currency at the moment. So, Vili, to use uh, some terminology that Michael used last week, we talked about earnings season and, and training up, uh, trading updates. What you're telling me is, is that uh, South Africa gave a bum trading update and it's been penalized on the market. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, back to your question on the bond market is, um, you're 100% correct. Normally, when we have this blowout on the, on the RAND perspective, the bonds follow because those are... South Africa's two sentimental indicators yes. from, a, from a foreign cash flow perspective. But what's interesting in the bond market at the moment is 
Um, and it also ties in with the flow of funds. So when lots of money leaves South Africa, obviously the currency will weaken. Um, and we've seen from a foreign perspective, the numbers around 30 billion has left the bond market in the sense foreigners have sold out. But funny enough, South African asset managers have absorbed this outflow because obviously that money needs to go somewhere. Yeah. Plus, if we look at the weekly auctions that um, um, that Treasury does, there's a certain amount of new bonds in issue, and then we can basically go and bid against that window. Uh, in the bond market, there's a term of is it oversubscribed or it's like anything in, in life, is it oversubscribed, yes or no? The last six to eight weeks, we've actually been substantially over, we've seen oversubscription on the issue um, three to four times. Oh, okay. To me, that's an indication that from a local perspective, fixed income fund managers are saying, um, or holistically as the managers are saying, hang on, we had an excellent performance in the, in the equity market up to this point, we sort of 10% on average up. We expected this for the year, we've seen it in January. Plus the scenario of the sketch earlier in the thing, in the sense of, mm, I think it's 100% that kosher. So let's stay in the fixed income and environment for that exact reason there's some fixed income that will carry me through the year so there's a build-up of local cash going into into the into the bond market and that's sort of keeping the yields intact yes. relative it has moved upwards because yields go when it's negative the yield goes up so it has moved but not in percentage terms as much as the, as the rent and that's that phenomenon there's actually the concern about the, the engine again, the South African engine, and where's the place of safety? Because remember, our interest rates by default is higher because we've also hiked interest rates yes. because of uh, inflation, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So there's that dynamic playing out at the, at the moment. So. Okay. So so normally we would have in the bond market more sellers of the bond, not enough buyers, which pushes the yield up because that's yeah. how the bond market yeah. works. But in this case. We, we do have the sellers, the foreign guys going, but the local buyers are almost matching. So we've almost got a balance of buyers and sellers, yeah. which is keeping it in equilibrium. Yeah. In equilibrium, yes. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Hopefully one day we'll all understand this. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, Billy, thanks for giving us some insight into some of those dynamics. And let's uh, hope we get a cabinet shuffle and, uh, and we start to see a visible uh, minister of electricity so we can move forward. Uh, thank you for joining us. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.